All right, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's um, Admitted Cougar event. It is our first support services and campus resource session. My name is Devin Thompson. I'm Senior Associate Director for Admissions Events, um, and we are all so thrilled to have you join us tonight. Um, we have some fantastic panelists from our support services offices on campus who have a lot of information to share with you all tonight um, that it's really going to make a big difference, we think, um, once you are a student with us. So. I'm just going to walk you through the lineup of um, our fantastic panelists that we have this evening. Um, we're going to be hearing from speakers in academic advising, um, Center for Student Learning, the Center for International Education, um, and the Offices of Multicultural Student Programs and Services. Um, I would just ask you all um, to submit any questions that you might have in the chat function. We will be taking questions um, at the end of all the presentations. So do submit your questions as they come in um, and we will get to them at the end. All right, well, with that, I'm going to pass it off to our first presenter, uh, Ron Smith from, from the Academic Advising Center. Ron? Thank you, Devin. Uh, so my name is Ron Smith and I am an academic advisor. I am the Assistant Director for Outreach and Programming, which means I participate in events like this. I'm also in charge of our orientation model uh, our majors and minors fair in the fall and um, our uh, veteran outreach as well. And so uh, what we're going to do today is just go over a little bit about uh, why you're coming to college. It's to get a degree. So we're going to talk about how you're going to do that over the next four years. So we're going to start with the next slide, please, Dan. So just uh, to kind of go over, you know, over the next four years as a college student, you have to complete what are considered 122 credit hours. So sometimes that can seem daunting, but if you really think about it, it's 40 classes over the next four years. You're gonna average about 10 classes a year, five per semester. Now, what's gonna make up those classes? You're gonna take something called a first year experience, and it's not just a clever name, that is something you're gonna take within your first year. So you'll take one either in the fall or in the spring. Uh, your general education requirements can vary uh, anyone, anywhere from 40 to 60 hours, depending on uh, the foreign language you have to take and the maths. And then there's your major courses. And, you know, that can be, we have majors like history, which is only 30 credit hours. And we have biochem, uh, which is up to 82 hours. So the big number you're trying to get to is 122. And so some of you will complete your major and your gen ed classes, and you may have a lot of electives you still need to take to get to 122 hours. And that's a place where you can put a minor in there or start working on those transferable skills. But that's where we as academic advisors really start talking to you about your strengths and your interests. And we will help guide you as you work your way through this 122 so that we make sure you're headed out the door, uh, the best version of yourself. We go to the next slide, please, Devin. So that first year experience, like I said, you're gonna knock that out in the first year. It's something called a first year seminar, or we even have these learning communities which are a combination of two different courses, usually with a theme, then the professors have worked together to create a syllabus that is focused in that area. You got a first year writing class you're gonna to have to take. Uh, this is really gonna teach you how to write a college paper. We all know you can write good papers. You're coming to the College of Charleston, you're talented writers, but it's time to amp that game up and this course is gonna help you as you write papers in the four years you're here. Next slide, please. So math, mathematics, you're gonna take two courses here um, and it depends on your major because obviously a science major is gonna take very different courses uh, than a history major uh, or a business major. Um, so you will be given a placement score, um, and so then that will tell you where you will fall within our mathematics classes, and then your advisor will work with you, talking to you about your major and which is the appropriate math for the major you're considering. We do have a foreign language requirement in our gen eds. Um, you have to complete what's called the 202 level. So basically it's a fourth level. So if you come in and you're starting at the beginning, you're going to end up taking four classes. But some of you will have experience with language in high school. And if you want to continue that language, you may be placed along this spectrum and you only have to take two classes and you'll be done. And we'll work with you during orientation to figure out what that is. We do have a natural science requirement. So you will take two sciences in the same area. 
that is a lecture and then a lab. Uh, we do have a history, and this is a, a world history. So uh, six credit hours, that means two classes, pre-modern and modern. You're going to take two social sciences. These are classes like psychology, sociology. Um, you're going to take four humanities. Humanities are sort of the study of culture and the arts. So we have classes like international studies, or if there's a region of the world you want to learn more about, we've got classes there. Uh, and also on the artistic side, classes like intro to theater, dance appreciation, art history. Uh, we do have a founding documents requirement. This is an online module you will complete before you graduate that is focused on the Constitution. So just realize that's going to be there for you to complete before you graduate. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about the advising model we have at the College of Charleston. Uh, during orientation, um, it's a group advising model where we're going to you know, and this summer we anticipate virtual advising. Um, and so you will meet with an advisor where you're gonna learn more about all these gen ed requirements. You're gonna learn more about all the majors we have. Uh, and then in the afternoon is when you'll actually register for your classes that afternoon. Um, and you'll work in a group to make sure we can kind of get it all done at once. But then when you come in the fall, in the fall and the spring, you're mandated to meet one-on-one -on -one for hour long meeting where we really get to know you and talk to you about your goals and your interests. You know, one of the smallest parts of our conversation is about classes. We're really working on discovering what it, what are your strengths and focusing on that. Uh, and we'll talk about all the tools and resources uh, that we have to help you figuring out your major and once you're in that major, your uh, journey through that major. Next slide, please, Tim. So this is kind of a breakdown of that conversation. Uh, one of the first things we start doing is uh, we start establishing goals. We're going to establish academic goals, but we're going to talk about personal goals as well. You know, we want to realize maybe there's some, maybe I want a part-time job, I want to join some clubs. Uh, you know, Ron, I think we may have lost. Identify your values, your strength. And um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Uh, yeah, and we want to recognize your values and strengths. And we're going to develop an action plan based on all of that in that conversation. You know, our job is to make sure you're the best version of yourself when you walk across that cistern in four years. And like I said, the last little thing we discussed is courses. That's the easiest part of our conversation. In fact, we're going to give you the resources that you can find that on your own. Uh, next slide, please, Deb. So just some student resources. Those of you who are still thinking about uh, majors, you haven't figured that out yet. We do have, uh, we work at the Career Center for their Choose a Major workshop. Uh, we sponsor the Majors and Minors Fair. So it's one-stop shopping where you get to meet all the different majors and learn about them. Uh, work with the Career Center with testing. We, uh, we have everything from strength testing to um, focus testing, Myers-Briggs, so a lot of testing, help you figure out your interests and how they match up with majors. And the major departments themselves are great resources to learn more about majors. And for academic support success, we, we do have, you know, Center for Student Learning, who we're gonna hear from in a minute, from Lindy, Center for Disability Services, Financial Aid, and we do have a Veteran and Military Student Services Office that was just opened uh, a couple of years ago. So a great resource for our veterans coming in. Next slide, please. A little bit about our office. We do have 16 professional academic advisors. Uh, we have, uh, and that's their job. That's our full-time job. Um, we have four peer advisors. So these are students that help us with the caseload. Uh, one of the things we offer is a quick question drop-in every day from two to four where either a peer advisor or one of our advisors can help you with questions you have. We do have those one hour personalized advising appointments where we really help you out. Uh, we do have uh, an appointment management system where you make your appointments with us online. And uh, we literally have uh, some of the most recognized advisors, uh, not only regionally, but in the country. So we're really kind of proud of our office and what we do here. And Devin, is that the last slide? I forget. Yes, okay, that's the last slide. There you go, our information. So yeah, while you're there, you can definitely uh, write down our phone number. Uh, our email, advising at cfc.edu, uh, is, is being manned constantly. So no, it's not one of those that just sits in a, a mailbox somewhere. Everyone at the College of Charleston, all our offices are stay on top of their emails pretty quickly. So we'll get back to you quickly with any questions you have. You can check out our website. 
We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So please, please, please reach out with any questions. Thank you, Ron. I know that was a lot of information that's so helpful to our students tuning in. Um, and guys, just remember, if you have any questions for Ron about academic advising, to put them in the chat now. Um, or if you think of something as we progress on through the evening, that's fine too. Um, and Ron will be available when all of our presentations have concluded to answer your questions. Um, but now I am excited to introduce you all to Lindy Coleman. She is our director for the Center for Student Learning on campus. And Lindy also has some great information to share with you all. So Lindy, take it away. Hi, it's great to be with you all, and I, um, I'm particularly glad that I could follow um, my friend and colleague, Ron Smith, uh, because the uh, Academic Advising Planning Center and the Center for Student Learning certainly do work really closely, work hand in hand, as we do with these officers that are represented tonight. We are um, constantly asking each other for help and support so that we can best support our students. So it really is a team effort. Um, one of the things that you saw in, uh, in Ron's slides was a good listing of the kinds of classes that you're going to be taking while you're at the college, um, both those in your major and those, more, those that are more general education types of requirements. And that's a perfect segue into um, my conversation, into my introduction uh, to, uh, to the Center for Student Learning because we are the tutoring center on campus. We're the hub for academic support services for any and all of your classes from the first semester you're on campus all the way up through the um, end of your senior year. This is a picture of our Adelstone Library, which is where we are physically located. This is kind of in the hub of campus and it's a beautiful, um, it's not the greatest picture, but it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful library inside. And even now in, um, in this, uh, COVID era. Uh, students are in the library right now in my office. Um, students are in the library right now, socially distanced at tables. This is where they want to be to do their studying because they are, because it's such a great space, a great three-story space. We are um, on the first floor of the library. Now I'm I'm kind of go I'm going to kind of going back and forth uh, with regard to the way our services are offered because of course right now we're fully online. All of our services um, are fully online through Zoom, um, and we don't quite know where we'll be in the in the fall semester. You know, hopefully we'll have uh, some kind of mix that's available for students. One thing that we found about uh, tutoring and other kinds of support is that um, is it some, for some students, for a lot of students, even if you're on campus on the peninsula in the Charleston area, sometimes it's just more convenient to get tutoring uh, through Zoom, and that's perfectly fine as well. So I think that you all coming in next year will kind of get that best of both worlds. We've we've figured out how to do support services on Zoom, online. Um, and then as we add back our, our regular kind of face-to-face -face services back in, I think you're gonna get the best of both worlds, um, which is really terrific. So let me talk a little bit about our services. Um, as I said, we're in, we're physically located in the library. And when we are, um, when we are in, when we are in person, what you would see when you walk up and down the halls of the Center for Student Learning are our drop-in or walk-in uh, tutoring labs. Um, those are a lot of those cover. Those cover a lot of those areas where um, where uh, th that Ron mentioned in the in his um, in his presentation on the different types of classes you'll be having. So there's a walk-in math lab. There's a walk-in foreign languages lab. There's a walk-in natural sciences lab. So we offer those kinds of tutoring services on a daily basis, about 60 to 80 hours a week, starting in the morning, um, about 10 o'clock, and open continuously until 9 o'clock at night, Monday through Thursday. We close a little bit earlier on Friday because students often find that they have different things that they want to do on Friday afternoon, like maybe check out some of our great restaurants or some of the activities uh, that are offered on campus, on and around campus. And then we open back up on Sunday nights from four until nine. All of our services are going strong Sunday nights from four until nine. So our drop-in tutoring services are the ones that you will um, kind of dabble in throughout your college career. You may start off with your science or you may do it um, you know your junior year or your senior year you may start off with your math uh, you may start off with your foreign language so those services that are going to cover a wide range of courses are going to be available to you in um, it readily available to you morning afternoon and evening um, for almost every day um, of the week right now just to kind of give you a sense of how that's working right now um, right now all of our services are um, are on zoom so a student who wants to use a math tutor or access a math tutor at 
you know, uh, six o'clock this evening, uh, we'll just get on our uh, get on our website and click on whoever's available, and then um, and then uh, be able to meet with that tutor right then and there. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump into the. I know I saw a question coming in on the chat right now. I'm gonna mention it because sometimes I forget uh, to mention this. Tutoring services, academic support services um, at the college are part of your tuition. You will not pay. Ex, any extra funds for tutoring. Um, and those of you who may have accessed uh, uh, tutoring before will probably know that that can be a very expensive prospect. These are trained peer, <clears throat> excuse me, peer tutors, students who are um, one, two, three, four semesters ahead of you who really love their subject area and who are really uh, interested in helping students get uh, a stronger foundation in those subjects. They're our paid employees, they're well trained through us, but they're not going to come at an extra cost to you. So I really appreciate somebody uh, throwing that question um, into, the, uh, into the chat. So if you look at that little drop down um, list, you'll see um, that first that first uh, bullet that I mentioned drop in and walk in tutoring, which is the bulk of our tutoring services. We have about 170 uh, student employees, tutors and others on staff. Um, we also offer by appointment tutoring in some areas that are maybe not that heavily populated as the as the walk in labs. So just as an example, this semester, um, I have uh, psychology tutoring, I have music theory tutoring, I have philosophy tutoring. So some of those subject areas that are maybe not as heavily populated as the, the drop in and the walk in labs, but we still cover those areas and you can always just send us an email and say I'm looking for a tutor in this class or in this class and we will work with you. Um, to access some support for you. SI, supplemental instruction, that third bullet down, is a, um, is a particular type of academic support that is tied to classes that are intra-level classes that, are, that tend to be very challenging. I'll give you an example at, at the College of Charleston that is um, biology and chemistry. So those students who plan to be going on to, uh, into careers and into graduate school in, um, in biology and chemistry and other subjects will always have access to what's called an SI leader, which is a student who's a major in that field who has trained extensively in what's called the SI model, um, who takes that class again with you uh, and while you're in it, it goes to every lecture and then holds three study sessions every week on that material. It is a highly effective program. It won't be available in every class because it's not necessary for every class, but we watch really carefully to see which classes students could use that extra support in and we provide an SI leader. Again, just as an example, this semester, our SI leaders are going to class with you, with the students, either um, live and in person, if it's a live and in person class, or remotely, if it's remote, and then they're holding as their three study sessions. Some of those study sessions are live and in person, and some of them are remote, so that all students, regardless of where they are and what their comfort level is, um, uh, they, can, uh, they, can take ac they can access those resources. Personalized study skill support is my fourth area and it's really my favorite. My professional staff and I all work one on one with students uh, to help you make sure that um, that you have, <clears throat> excuse me, a plan for every one of your classes where you're getting the best support and the, um, the most effective support to do your best to do the work level that you want to do uh, to achieve at the goals that you the at the uh, GPA goals and other goals that you want to achieve. And so we'll work one on one with you to help you identify the right resources and meet with you weekly or bi weekly or monthly or whatever is best for you to make sure that you're getting the, um, the resources that you need. And then as uh, similar to that we do have a series every semester of study skills workshops. Um, and those are on topic areas that are of interest to a lot of students, new students and returning students, um, time management and what do I do with all these notes, class notes, how do I handle all this reading in college, all of those kinds of things that maybe first year students really like to have access to because this is all very new to them. Um, so we ended, I would say that just about um, any, any type of studying that you may feel that you need some support with we're there available, whether it's in a workshop or whether it's one on one or a combination of both where we can help you. So regardless of what you might be taking at any semester from the beginning to the end of your college career, you can always email the Center for Student Learning and say, what resources do you have uh, for this class or for another class or for all of my classes? And we'll help you put together a personalized plan that involves 
tutoring might involve SI, uh, supplemental instruction might involve study skills, um, will help you put together that plan again so that you can reach, um, reach your own goals. Um, we've got a very robust website. Our web address is there and you can always access it on, um, on the College of Charleston homepage. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of folks in person uh, in the fall semester. But if for some reason we don't, we are up and running 100% um, on Zoom. And, uh, and you can always email us if you have any questions even long before you started your College of Charleston career. So it's great, great to be with you. And like everyone else, I'll be around. Um, I'll be around for questions. Thank you so much, Lindy. Um, it's been a while since I was in school, but I know that I personally benefited from many of the services offered uh, by the CSL. So Yay. we are thankful for that resource for our students. Great. All right. Well, our next uh, presenter is Sarah Simonite from um, the Center for International Education. Sarah is going to walk you all through um, Study Abroad 101. And I know that's something a lot of our students on the call tonight are interested in doing um, while they're at the College of Charleston. So Sarah, I'm going to hand it off to you. Thank you, Devin. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm excited to be here tonight to talk to you about the opportunities um, offered at the College of Charleston for studying abroad. And we think this is um, one of the main reasons um, we have a, a great reputation um, for these education abroad opportunities um, and why students choose the College of Charleston. Um, next slide, please. So just real quick, um, the college was ranked actually in the, in the last reporting, which was for the academic year 2018-19, um, as the number one, uh, sorry, number four um, in uh, student participation for master level universities. So as you can see, you're joining um, peers who um, very much want that study abroad experience. Obviously, we're in um, very trying and unique times given the pandemic, but on average, we have about a thousand students who study abroad um, each year, and, and we hope to um, work with you so that you can be one of those students as well. Next slide. Um, so uh, uh, kind of the pathways to study abroad, I'm gonna give a, a quick overview of the three different program types. So they're listed here, are faculty-led, exchange, and affiliate, and I'll break those down a little bit more on the coming slides. Next. So the first is our faculty-led, these are CFC, um, programs. So they're offered um, during spring break, semester, and summer. Um, this is a um, setup where students pay their normal tuition, just like they're on campus. There's one exception for summer. I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. Um, and then you have a program fee, and that typically is going to include your housing, meals, excursions, um, all of the kind of cultural activities related to the program, um, insurance, and then depending on the program, airfare. Um, and all of your financial aid applies, particularly for that semester program. And just um, some of the, a few benefits, because there's a ton, is students, you get to study with your CFC peers. And a lot of times, maybe you're meeting new um, friends who are participating in this program. Um, and students really comment about how they enjoy um, getting to meet maybe students they wouldn't normally have um, because they're studying in the same program together. Um, there'll be a CFC program director, you know, faculty on site, and you're earning CFC credits, why we're calling it a faculty-led program, because you're taking those courses um, just like you were on campus, but it's a little bit more exciting in, in some of our locations than maybe Maybank Hall, um, although that's it's a great academic building, but uh, um, there are other exciting places besides Charleston, too, and we're happy to connect students with these opportunities. Um, so, uh, this is a good, um, you know, way for students, particularly for those short-term programs. If you haven't been abroad before, um, not sure where you want to go, good opportunity to kind of get your feet wet um, and going with the a faculty program. And um, I want to make a note for our um, out-of-state students that for our summer programs, so this is just for our summer faculty programs, our out-of-state students do receive um, a discount on the tuition. Um, it, the kind of math formula is it's the in-state rate plus 30%. So if you look at that per credit rate, it works out to be about half the rate um, of a normal um, out-of-state during the regular semester. So hopefully that's a good financial incentive for those out-of-state students who are thinking of taking a course over the summer. Why don't um, do it as a part of a, a study abroad course? Next slide. So real quick, just um, some photos of our fall programs. Um, of course, they were suspended last fall. So these are from um, previous cohorts. So Santiago, Chile, uh, Florence, Italy, Trujillo, Spain, and La Rochelle, France. You can 
see a bunch of smiles on there. So students enjoying that program. And in the spring, we're in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Havana, Cuba, and also back in Trujillo, um, Spain as well. Next slide, thank you. So um, you heard Ron mention about the first year um, experience course. So we have a first year experience abroad course. This does not satisfy that FYE requirement, which is for three credits. Um, rather, this is a one credit course that students will take um, during the spring semester and then have that abroad component over spring break. Um, but again, here are just some samples of um, courses and, and programs that have run before. So that's a great way to earn that credit. And again, um, if you're you know, first time going abroad or first time um, as, a, as a more mature adult going abroad, um, this is a good opportunity uh, for that week long. And then depending on what the faculty propose, we will have some courses that are um, upper level courses. So part of um, a spring semester long uh, course where they, again, they have that um, overseas component during spring break. And again, just a couple of um, options here. And so it will vary depending on what faculty propose. So those do tend to run uh, to rotate each uh, year. Next slide. And then again, just a quick snapshot. These are some of our summer programs. It does include Maymester, um, which we do consider part of the summer term. Um, so hopefully, you know, it's a lot to look at, but that's a good thing. So we have a lot of variety, a lot of diversity, not only in location, but also in um, the disciplines. So I really wanna you know, point out maybe those non-traditional um, subjects when you think about study abroad. So we have quite um, active STEM faculty. So geology and biology that offer um, courses in the summer. So um, hopefully we can find a location and courses that work for your interests and academic plan. Next slide. So again, that was all the faculty programs we're earning CFC credit. So moving on to our second option is with our exchange programs. And this is really where we partner with foreign universities. It's kind of the old school version of study abroad. So um, we would send a student to one of our partner universities. And in theory, a student attending um, that university would come and study at the College of Charleston. So most of our students go for a semester. There are academic year and a few summer options. Another financial benefit is students are paying their CFC tuition, just as if they were on campus. Um, and then typically any housing and meals costs you would pay directly to um, your host university. But again, because you're paying that CFC tuition, all financial aid applies. So um, your scholarships, loans, grants, all of that applies because of that tuition charge you have for that semester. And some of the benefits, again, certainly not an exhaustive list, is your, um, it's more of an independent uh, experience, more immersive, because you're studying alongside those uh, local students, as well as maybe other international students. And I always encourage students, um, as you're exploring these options, if you have uh, exchange students in your classes when you're on campus, that's a great resource to get connected with them, learn more about their host country, their host university. And a lot of times, this is how students will find out about uh, these options. And again, just a, a quick snapshot, um, we're actually in some negotiations with some new partners. So hopefully we'll be adding to this list, um, quite a variety here. Um, some are discipline specific. So uh, the one in Italy for University of Bolzano, that's for our computer science majors, um, but those courses are taught in English and that's a, a great option for students that may be difficult to find on an exchange program. So, um, and my colleague works um, with these um, programs and again, happy to, to speak with you about what may work for your academic and personal interests. And then finally, that third option is what we call our affiliate. So these are um, study abroad organizations that the college partners with. Um, this is what I specifically advise on within my portfolio. So students can study for a semester, summer, or even a full academic year. The biggest financial difference between this and that exchange and faculty led is students do not pay CFC tuition. Um, you're only charged the study abroad fee um, and rather you pay everything a comprehensive fee to that host organization as you know, those fees are published on their website. But the college is pretty generous in the aid that you can take uh, on an affiliate program. So federal loans and grants such as the Pell Grant, state grants, and for our uh, resident students, if you have the state scholarships like Palmetto, even then enhancement can also be used. Um, I'll talk in a minute about scholarship opportunities that are office awards, and these are applicable to an affiliate program. 
and really why you know the college partners with a number of these organizations is because it just offers a huge range of courses and, and locations available to students so meeting those needs where our current faculty and exchange programs um, aren't exactly um, addressing particular interests. So if a student wanted to go to New Zealand for a semester to study geology, they could do that through um, a affiliate program. Uh, we'll also hear students, you know, will have an opportunity to meet other Americans. So most U.S., many U.S. universities are partnered with, with some of the same organizations. So you can be um, connecting with making new friends from, from Kansas. And so it's, it's a great way to meet other students from around the U.S. Um, and there's a lot of um, on-site support services and, and cultural excursions that are included um, when studying with these providers. Um, again, real quick, um, it's kind of snapshot. And again, um, many of the other US universities will also work with these same organizations. So they've been vetted. We have participants study, um, you know, on average about 100, 125 students every semester who's studying um, with these various programs. So um, those were the three different kind of program options. So just kind of pulling back a little bit, you know, what we talk to students about when they're considering a program. Um, you know, think about the courses that you want to take. It's not only for your major or minor, although we typically will see students in their junior year taking at least one or two classes for their major. You can also take some of those general education classes that Ron talked about earlier, or even elective courses. So I have a student, um, maybe he's finished all of his poli-sci um, courses except one, his capstone, and wants to go abroad, you know, in the fall, it has nothing but electives. Well, like Ron talked about, you still need those electives to get to that 122 to walk across the cistern. Um, why not go abroad, you know, take some unique classes um, special to where you're studying, to that culture, maybe thinking about a, a particular area you want to explore within that major that are not classes exactly offered at the College of Charleston. So that could give you an opportunity to think about what you want to continue um, in a profession life or at the grad school level. And also, it's, you know, very common to take courses that are instructed in English, even in non-English speaking countries. So I'll highlight our fall program in Italy, in Florence. So um, that is through the comm department. So there's communication classes. It's geared towards those majors. There's usually a few other um, humanities and social sciences courses offered as well. Um, also for our Trujillo Spain in the fall, that is not necessarily geared towards majors and minors in Spanish, but we rotate out the disciplines that are offered. We have political science, biology, writing. Um, so really thinking, you know, challenging students to think about beyond necessarily just those English speaking countries because you can find courses instructed in English um, in many places. Um, the earlier you plan, the better. So I'm glad you're here now, um, planning the seed and get thinking about what you might be interested in, what you wanna study. Um, national average is about for students going abroad their junior year, but I always tell students, doesn't matter what everyone else is doing, it matters what works best for you. Some majors like your education um, can be uh, difficult to, match up the courses if it's transfer credit. Um, so that might be earlier, to, better to plan earlier in your sophomore year. So that's why we're happy to talk with you as soon as you get on you know, campus. So we can kind of map out um, where is the best semester or summer term um, during your four-year career. And we're, we're seeing um, students you know, intern for credit. Um, I had eight students last semester, uh, sorry, spring semester of last uh, of 2020 who were um, studying and interning and, and earning credit for, for that internship. So really having that kind of um, experiential learning opportunity is, is growing in popularity in that international context as well. And financial considerations, oftentimes, you know, we'll hear that finances are a barrier. And we're, it's really important for us to have those conversations because we want to make sure that this opportunity that students desire is um, available to everyone. Um, we certainly see it as an investment in your future. Um, certainly can help you, you know, um, with your graduation plans, um, you know, fulfilling some of those major gen ed requirements. Um, but it's also preparing you um, for your future career, making you more marketable, giving you those transferable skills, this um, experience that you can really talk about in those interviews um, and grad school applications. So, you know, don't just think of it as something that's, um, you know, part of your college career only, but will really um, contribute to um, your professional life. The cost is going to vary per program. There's really no average price. 
um, certainly how long you're going, um, the cost of the exchange rate for the host country, those things factor in. So, you know, always want to have these conversations with students so we can help um, you plan with what works best for your financial situation. Um, and again, depending on the program, it could be less than studying at CFC. Um, again, just depends on the type of program and the location. Um, as I mentioned, just, um, just about all that type of aid that students have, except those tuition tied scholarships can be applied through an approved program. And our office awards a number of scholarships, quite a few scholarships, probably over a hundred given the um, three terms, both semesters and the summer as well. So we really encourage students to apply for scholarships. Um, you'll find other academic departments on campus also award scholarships as well. So we wanna help students um, access those resources. And then we work with students who are applying for nationally competitive scholarships like the Bourne or the Gilman, which is for Pell eligible students. And that's a particular passion of mine. So um, when I meet with students who are Pell eligible, I tell them you, you have to apply for the Gilman. Um, that's between three and $5,000. So we really want you know students to, to um, access those funds. And then some of our affiliate partnerships, um, one of the benefits is a scholarships and grants that we have specifically for CFC students. So um, again, we hope students don't discount um, this opportunity because of the financial cost. We wanna have those conversations because a lot of times they'll find out it is um, affordable for them, I think. And so, um, you know, obviously this is a difficult time, um, you know, for the international education field um, and any decision that the college makes is gonna be first and foremost based on their, the health and safety of, of the students and the faculty and, and certainly the community. So, you know, we're continually monitoring the, the conditions. Um, we have not made decisions for this summer that'll be coming, but hopefully um, as, you know, the incoming class in the fall, next um, either part of the first year experience abroad course um, spring of 22 or the following summer we'll have much more favorable conditions um, and so you'll be eligible you know like I said for that spring break program or starting next summer on and and hopefully we'll get back to a little bit more normalcy um, but we are supporting virtual programs we have students who are participating in a virtual internship um, so these are opportunities too we're happy to to talk about um, with students as well so know that is um, an opportunity and I think, yep. So I encourage you to follow our Instagram blogs, great way to hear about what past students have done um, and uh, kind of do some fun research to see where you may be interested in, in studying yourself. I think that is it. Yep, and our contact information. So thank you and I'd be happy to take questions if there are any at the end. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, Sarah. Awesome. Um, I know we've, I had lots of friends that studied abroad. I know our admissions counselor, Rebecca, who's on the call tonight, had a wonderful study abroad experience. So hope you all will add that to your plans um, at CFC. All right, our final, last but not least, presenter for the evening. Um, we have Linda Keller from the Multicultural Student Programs and Services Office um, on campus. So Linda, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Devin. It's, uh, it's so nice to see some of my colleagues on here and. Ron and Lindy um, and Sarah talked about some of the things related to the academic side of the house. So um, advising and tutoring services and study abroad. And those are all really awesome, awesome supports that um, you need to take advantage of. And studying abroad is such a great experience. I'm on the student affairs side of the house. So we focus a lot on those things that you do outside of class. So one of the things that the, um, multi, and the Multicultural Center, and we're in the same building as the Study Abroad Office. So you can come and see us and then just walk right down the hall and check in with Sarah in the Study Abroad Office to talk about those opportunities. But some of the things that we do in, um, we finally refer to us ourselves as MSPS, it takes less oxygen. But we do a lot of cultural and heritage month, month events throughout the semester. So like right now, it's Black History Month. So we're, we're doing some events virtually. We've had to adapt to that virtual online world because of COVID. And then we also, um, our office is responsible for safe zone training. So we do um, training related to LGBTQ issues so that people can become more aware um, so that we can create a really inclusive environment at the College of Charleston. 
And I'm actually the one who's um, in charge of doing that training. Uh, one of our big programs that we are starting to gear up for now, and some of you may have, I think our first email maybe went out, I'm not sure, through the admissions office. We do a summer program called Spectra. And it's during the summer two session at the College of Charleston. Typically, we bring um, underrepresented students to campus. We pay for you to live in the dorm. We pay for you to take classes. We, we take you on um, events out in the community. And all of that is free of charge. Now, this past summer, due to COVID, we that program still moved forward, but we did it all virtually. So students took an online class. We had leaders, we had student leaders that did virtual activities so that students still had the opportunity to get to know each other um, because some students did come onto campus in, in the fall semester. That application has opened up for students to apply to the program. And um, I did not include that in my slide for Devin. So I'll put it in the chat before we finish up. Um, as part of the Spectra program, after the program is over, we also pair students up with a mentor. So you could either have a peer mentor or a faculty or staff member from campus that we would connect you to um, for mentoring. And that mentoring, we encourage students to keep up with it for at least their freshman year. Um, Devin, you can move to the next slide. Oh, <laughs> I was looking at mine, sorry. <laughs> um, the other thing that we're getting ready to, that we're gearing up for now, and President Xu sent an email out to campus today. Um, we do the Excel Awards Program, uh, where we recognize faculty, staff, and students, and even community groups who um, contribute to the diversity of the College of Charleston. And we usually have a big ceremony, we have use a, have a big award ceremony and have a lot of fun. Um, last year, it typically happens in March. So of course, COVID put the big uh, squash on that. This year in March, we are going to do a virtual version of the Excel Awards because we want to still continue to be able to recognize the good work that are that people are doing across campus. In our building, on the fourth floor, we have a prayer and meditation space uh, for, it's a non-denominational space for people to, for students to come to pray, meditate, just some quiet time. Uh, our building is in one of the very old houses um, on campus, right next door to the Adelstone Library. So there is no elevator. So we did get the School of Education. We have um, another prayer med meditation space in the School of Ed that's on the first floor and is um, students can get access to that if you have limitations and you can't climb stairs. The other thing about our building is we do have, um, it's a really good space for students to come and socialize with friends. We have a lot of student groups that hold meetings in our building. We have, you can come and study, you can use the copy machine and, and do schoolwork. We have computer labs, uh, uh, computer banks for students to use. We have a living room with a big TV on the wall where students can come and socialize. Um, and those, we, cough, we have a coffee station. Um, of course, some of those things aren't being utilized as much um, this year, of course, because of COVID, um, which uh, we, I, I was in the building the other day and it's just really strange not to see a, a flow of students in and out um, and to see my coworkers. Uh, but we really hope that um, we see you in our building um, when we're allowed to be there again. Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but seeing students on Zoom is a lot better than not seeing students at all. 
but um, I can't wait for the time where I actually get to share the same physical space with all of you. Um, I didn't, uh, we didn't put the link to the Spectra application in the slide uh, because it just went live the other day. So I will add um, that information into the chat along with my contact information. So if you have any questions, um, or if you want to go ahead and apply to Spectra, you can do that now. Um, I did see, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to pull a Lindy. I did just see a question pop up um, on the bottom. Somebody asked if Spectra is going to be virtual this summer. Um, we haven't gotten the 100% answer about that. We are planning for virtual, but hoping that we get to flip that switch to be in person even though all classes will still be virtual, we're still hoping that we will be able to bring students on the campus, but we're being told right now because of COVID numbers and where we are with the vaccine and all that kind of stuff that we're probably um, not gonna bring, be able to bring students to campus, but we will still hold a program virtually just like we did last summer. Um, students, the evaluations we got from students were really great. They were very happy that they got to make those connections with their Spectra leaders who are peer facilitators um, and to get to know some of their um, fellow entering freshmen before they came to campus. So that is frequently when students build those relationships that kind of carry them through their entire college career. Um, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat and I guess we'll get to them now. Thank you, Devin. Thanks, Linda. Um, and just to clarify, um, Linda was talking about the Spectra courses being virtual this summer. Um, we are not set for totally virtual for the fall semester at this time. Obviously, anything is subject to change as we continue to track COVID um, throughout the academic year, but at this time, um, we're still planning to offer on campus in hybrid virtual courses into the fall. I know we had a couple of questions pop in about that. So just wanted to clarify that quickly. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, MSPS is such a wonderful resource to our students and we are thankful to have you on campus and that prayer and meditation space is beautiful. So it's a great resource for our students. Just a reminder, everyone, before we get started with the Q&A portion, you can always email admissions at cfc.edu um, or admissions events at cfc.edu as well um, with any questions. Um, and you can also register for additional virtual events that we're offering this spring semester. So um, we will be offering on-campus admitted student tours for the remainder of the spring semester, but those are the only on-campus event type um, visits we're offering. All of our other admitted student events are all virtual for the spring. So um, no admitted student days on campus this year. Instead, we're offering a whole host of events that actually kick off tonight right now. So good job for you all being on the call. Um, and they will continue into April. So be, be sure to check out our virtual visitor center on the admissions website to continue registering for those events. Um, okay, so now I'm going to stop my screen share and we're going to go to the Q&A portion of the evening. Um, thank you all for um, submitting lots of great questions throughout the, throughout the time um, tonight. So one of our first questions um, I think is going to be for you, Ron, and it's asking, if I'm already in an advanced foreign language class, am I allowed to continue that course throughout all four semesters, all four years at College of Charleston instead of just two semesters? So yeah, that's a great question. So uh, yes, the general education requirement is you have to complete that 202 level would be kind of, you know, if I'm taking Spanish, what would be Spanish four or German four, whichever language it is. But we do offer um, uh, several majors in our languages and minors. So you can continue that language further so you can become, you know, almost fluent in that language. Also while learning about the different cultures and areas while you're taking those courses. So for sure you can continue if it is a language we offer. Um, and just off the top of my head, I can tell you we offer uh, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, German, Japanese, uh, Hebrew, ancient Greek, Latin, 
I'm Italian. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting some of them, but they, we offer around 12 to 13 languages here. So a lot of languages, but I can go ahead and jump to the next question. We do not offer sign language. We do not offer ASL. I wish we did. We do not. Uh, so you will have to take one of the languages that we offer here. Um, I will say also though, if you are fluent in a language, uh, you can talk to our language departments about getting a waiver uh, for that gen ed requirement. So just be aware of that as well. Perfect, thank you, Ron. Um, and I actually have one more question for you. Um, this question asks, at what point do you need to declare your major? Great question. So uh, you are not required to declare your major until the spring of your sophomore year. So you that is basically your fourth semester. So you've got some time to explore the different majors. And that's one of the things we do as advisors is helping you. You know, what we try to do is find those majors we're exploring, get those intro classes, and maybe we're double dipping and taking care of uh, one of our general education requirements at the same time. So we'll work with you to figure out your passion, your interests, your strengths, how they match up with the majors we have. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, you've got until the spring of your sophomore year. So that's a lot of time. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a couple questions coming in the chat about pre-testing for COVID. Um, and I'll take that one just really quickly. Um, we do require students who are going to live on campus to get a COVID test before move-in. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, when you approach move-in later this summer, to not wait till the absolute last minute to get your two-day test, um, because we wanna make sure you have those results in and plenty of time to get into your residence hall. Um, and the college is actively testing on campus as well. We have a partnership with MUSC um, and DHEC as well, I believe. So we offer free testing to students, faculty, and staff. Um, and we're actually doing mandatory random testing amongst students throughout the week as well. So we are keeping campus as safe as possible during these times. Um, let's see, we have some questions about work study that's gonna be addressed um, in our program on February 22nd, you all. Um, so be sure to register for our next session like this. Um, Lindy, this question is for you. Are student tutors trained in the Orton Gillingham method. Um, so one of the things that uh, another office on campus that we um, that we that is not the same as us, but that we could work closely with is um, is our Center for Disability Services. And um, that would be uh, and so that works uh, that office works with students who have a documented uh, disability, whether that's um, through a psychoeducational uh, series of tests or a physical disability, and they work with students um, to uh, and their uh, and their documentation to determine what kinds of um, accommodations they can use. In, in large part, I think, based on, you know, what accommodations they had access to in high school and how that translates into, um, into college work. Um, so my office does not, um, we are not trained specialists in, um, in accommodations or in working uh, with um, assisted, um, uh, assistive technology or other types of services, but our disability services office uh, does do that. And we collaborate with them frequently so that we can be the most up to speed with um, with services uh, that our, our students need. Perfect. Thank you, Lindy. And I'm just sorry. a reminder, you all, um, again, I mentioned that we're offering an, a round two uh, support services mm -hmm. session on February 22nd. And the Center for um, Disability Services, also known as SNAP, will be on the call that night. So um, if you have any questions entered in the chat about those services, make sure that you register for the event on the 22nd. Um, and we'll be able to cover those then. All right, our next question is for Sarah. Sarah, um, this student is asking if you can use the post 9-11 GI Bill for studying abroad. Um, yeah, we saw the more of a clarification on, on the reg. So we like to you know um, see students when they're on campus, depending on um, any updates. But currently my understanding, and we can confirm this with Scott Woolham um, in Veterans Affairs, is that the veterans funds can be used when it's a faculty program um, where tuition is charged. So um, some of the clarification nationally across the field has been the university that's charging the funds has to be delivering the courses. So that would be our, our faculty semester programs. Thank you. All right, Linda, this question is for you. Um, just going back to the SPECTRA program, when will students be notified if they've been admitted to the SPECTRA program? We usually um, do it sort of on a rolling uh, 
process that so as students apply we review applications but we're just now starting to get those so i would say we would probably send out our first notifications of acceptance by the by the end of march so that i can start meeting with students virtually to do a little bit of pre-advising to talk to you about what classes you're going to take during the specter program so that when by the time you get to your orientation and you're meeting with Smitty and his folks over in academic advising, you know what you're going to be taking during Spectra so that they know so that you get advised appropriately for the fall. So we'll be sending out those um, notifications probably by the end of March. But if you have any other questions about that, students can email me directly. Perfect. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ron, this question is for you. Um, a student just wants some confirmation if they are able to test out of foreign language courses as an entering uh, question. Yeah, no, I mean, like you said, it's just gonna be talking with the department about your level of comfort with not only speaking it, but writing it. Uh, and there's plenty of students who, that's why when you saw that slide and I talked about the varying numbers of classes you need to complete your gen eds, there are students who don't take any foreign language courses. Uh, but then there's some students who take up to 16 hours to complete that requirement. So yeah, you can definitely talk to the department and not have to take a single course. Perfect, thank you. Um, and Rebecca, I think you're still on the call. Um, I was hoping you could just remind our students about, um, I know I've touched on it a little bit, but just explaining some of the different um, virtual admitted student events that we have this spring. I know there's some questions coming in about that. Yeah, definitely. So these, like the one that we're doing tonight, are going to be great. And there are a multitude of them coming up within the next couple of months. Um, so go to the, the Virtual Visitor Center, uh, and you can actually see every different type of event that we have coming up, whether it's virtual, in-person. Majority of them are going to be virtual. Just want to keep everyone safe and healthy. Um, but definitely go and check those out. Um, we do have some tours for current high school seniors um, because, are you okay? huh? For admitted high school. For seniors. admitted, for admitted seniors. Um, just because of COVID and everything, we got to keep those a little bit smaller um, and, and prioritize a little bit right now. Um, but again, Virtual Visitor Center is going to be at your best place for finding those virtual events. Um, and uh, we aren't unfortunately having any in-person open houses um, just due to COVID and regulations and everything. Thanks, Rebecca. And just another reminder, um, admissions counselors like Rebecca and all of our other crew, uh, they're also offering one-on-one -on -one with the admissions counselors. So if you're still kind of deciding um, as we progress through the spring on whether or not you plan to enroll at the College of Charleston and you have any final questions for your admissions counselor specifically, you can always register for those one-on-ones with your admissions counselor. Um, and those are really helpful as well. All right, well, it looks like we got to all the questions for the most part in the chat. Just a reminder, um, we will have um, the center for, um, excuse me, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> the um, Disability we'll services. Disability, yeah. <laughs> Disability services, yes, thank you. Um, we'll also have the career center. That's the one I was not able to grab uh, <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, and some other folks, financial aid. Um, to name a few on our February 22nd evening. So please make sure to register for that event if you haven't already. Um, and if it hits capacity before you're able to register because that will be offered on Zoom too, um, it will be recorded and it will be emailed to you all. And just like tonight's will be recorded and emailed. Um, so stay on the lookout for that. But we appreciate you all joining us tonight, um, particularly probably after a long day of Zoom school. Uh, and we hope it was um, informative, but if you have any questions, um, Rebecca, can you drop the link to the Virtual Visitor Center in the chat for me real quick? Um, if you have any questions, like I said, please email our office. And um, if we can't answer it, we'll direct you to the right person on campus who joined us tonight who can answer. All right, everyone, take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Have a good Bye. night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good to see everybody.